Hello, welcome to Mark's Garage. I've been messing around with my 32 frame and chassis and rear axle and um, ignore that shock absorber, that's just something I was playing with. And the torque tube. I've shortened the torque tube and I've got it tensioned up with this strap sitting on a mount there and bolted on there so there's the torque tube which I've shortened by five eighths of an inch compared to how it was on that table over there I've got my selection of drive shafts and things so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use those torque tubes and drive shafts to deduce the length of the shaft I need to suit this. So I'm going to take a series of measurements, work out the difference between the two factory sh setups that I've got. I've got an Allard and a Pilot and in the middle is the, um, the one that I made for this. So let's start getting a couple of measurements. Now what I'm going to do, because this Allard one only has the rear hole, I'm going to use I'm going to use this hole as my datum. And I'm going to measure from that side of the bolt there. I know it's you know not a precision fit pin. So let's find the difference between this length and this length. So what I'll do, I'll just go through and take a bunch of measurements, then I'll do the maths afterwards. Okay. So this is the Allard, and it's 49 and 7 sixteenths, or 12125 six millimeters one two five six because it might be that millimeters are easier than doing the fractions on this job so that's 46 and 11 sixteenths from the far side of that bolt to here or one one eight six let's say one one eight six Okay, so there's two numbers there. So here's the pilot one here. Okay, so let's get the pilot overall then. So here's the pilot. Again, factory, you know, factory job. Right, then that's 66 and 1 eighth or one six seven nine okay happy with that we'll get it on the bolt on the drive shaft there let's do the inches outside then so that's 63 and 5 sixteenths right millimeters is one six oh nine 1609. So I've got four dimensions there, and they will tell me the difference between the drive shaft and the torque tube. So I'll go and do some sums and I'll come back, and then I'll be able to say exactly what length I need that one. The reason I'm doing this is because this is a, for a 10 spline. That diff is a 6 spline. I'll go and do some sums and I'll be back in a bit. Look at that, I forgot my tea. Right. Okay. I just went and put it, put the numbers into an Excel sheet, and to be honest, 
although I tend not to do this, I use millimetres on this job. And <laughs> to be honest, it was so much easier. So I can't read you the numbers out because I haven't got them in my head. But basically, if you if you take the drive shaft length to the side of the bolt, compare it to that, it's 70 millimetres difference. Now obviously this where I've measured to isn't a kind of standard dimension so I can get some other dimensions to convert that. Okay. To, from there to there 25 mil but that's the basic number we're looking for so what I need now is the length of that drive shaft the length of that torque tube over there in millimetres it on at the front on the bell and I'll read, I'll read it back at this I'll read it back at this flange here okay so that is yeah one three three nine one three three nine okay 1339 minus 70 is 1269. 1269. Remember that number. Let's get a measurement on this shaft just to see how similar we are. We're looking for 1269 and we've got 128. One. That's one two eight one, and what what we want is one two six nine. So it's twelve mil too long. It's twelve mil too long, and it's got the wrong end on. So just out of interest, oh, and I know the dimension for that, don't I? One two six nine. And what was this one again? Obviously, I still haven't written anything down. It's all on an Excel sheet in the house. So what's this one here yeah, then? How, how much too short is this? Right, that's one one eight six. Eleven eighty six. One two six nine. There. That. So where my thumb is. Is where that needs to come to. Right, our magic number is 1269, isn't it? 1269 there to the bolt. There. So, what I'm kind of thinking and wondering. Would it be possible to maybe cut this a little bit short, cut this a little bit short, put a small piece of spline material there, put them together and weld round. The, re the only reason I'm saying that is because to put this in there, like it would, it would need to be about around about there, I would need to sleeve this might turn up a, a piece to go on there and on in, inside there but what I noticed with this got quite a nasty dent there I can't help thinking that if I can use this tube I might be better off and just kind of put that on the end of it and it would have to be approximately that long wouldn't be out of the question would it really and I'm pretty sure somewhere I've got another you know a piece of shaft with some of the spline on it 
Do you know something? I think I might have a go at doing that. Yeah, I think that's... Okay, I'm going to have to have a think about that. But I've got my dimensions now. And it's, I've got them all on the film, so... I can go and do some working out. But it's useful having these parts around, isn't it? Okay. Food for thought. Plenty to be going on with. Thanks very much for tuning in. I'll uh, bring you back when there's more to show, or I'll bring you back when I'll see you next time. Thanks a lot then. Bye. Hello, look it's the old 59 flatty with the boring machine on it. Um, I've been away for the weekend and I'm, we're back now and just before we went away I was doing a little bit of work on, on the bores, I was using the boring machine on the bores and uh, the machine has developed a problem. Those four bores down there are finished, well that one's finished, that one's finished and while the machine was actually on the, the finishing bore of this one it stopped feeding there's a mechanism here you turn this hand nut here this knurled nut and it clamps a split nut onto the thread there and the nut rotates and it winds it down I think it's worn rather than broke but I think the scroll mechanism that winds the half nuts in is worn out and it's no longer generating enough force to um, feed it down. I managed to I managed to just finish that bore by kind of feeding it down manually with this handle sort of allowing the thing to um, try and feed it down and I just took up the slack so it did feed it down so I was able to do it very slowly and get finish that bore but I haven't even started on this bore here so I've got to investigate what's wrong and it's all up in here so I thought I'd just introduce the fact oops I thought I would just introduce the fact that there's a problem with this machine now I can't use it anymore until I've repaired it I might not be able to actually repair it fully if I can't repair it fully I might try and make it so that it's permanently engaged with the feed screw and when I get to the end of the bore I will actually wind it back up using the feed screw without finish fixing it in some way or other I can't do that bore so I need to do something to enable me to finish that bore even if it's a temporary fix okay I'll bring you back when I've been able to get ready and there's a little bit more to show I've taken the feed mechanism out it fits down in there and I've just been working on a, a fix for it this is the feed screw that goes vertically in there hope you can see that okay so that goes in there so this stands still this housing is gear driven and in it on that in that area there are these half nuts like that and on these half nuts there's three little pegs that have been put in there and filed and three little pegs there that have been filed in the bottom of here is a scroll but in the bottom of there that surface is a scroll as you wind this one way or the other the scroll takes these in or out what appears to have happened 
is that the thread has worn at this lower edge there. So what I'm going to do as a, a fix to allow me to finish the job is to wedge these down there and down there with two bits of metal so that it's constantly engaged. It's not ideal, but it will allow me to finish the job. And to be honest, I can't see me making a new pair of those or being able to source a new pair of those. I don't use the machine very often, so for the few times I do use it, I think this workaround will be okay. Here are the two pieces of metal. They ju I'm just going to slot one down there and one down there to keep keep these in inwards. I'm going to just put a bit of sl give them a little clean and and uh, put it in place. It's quite an ingenious mechanism, to be honest. I, th I thought that this might be a bit of a weak point when I put it together. So that goes in the top. This worm gear gets driven by that. That worm gear there gets driven by that. And that gear there drives that. It's quite clever. There you go. Okay, so that's down there. And I need to... There, that's just engaged now with that. So that is redundant now, but it is right the way down. So that's right the way down now. And I'll just drop this piece on. I haven't cleaned these because they're, they're nice and greasy. So that goes there like that. And there's a couple of screws that go up from underneath just to hold it in place. I think having the nuts held parallel will help because it'll it'll start using the parts of the threads at the other end. I just filed the end of it a bit. I've got a snap on and a made in India that's like the opposite ends of the spectrum. Just put a dollop of jollop in there and let it work its way around. It'll all leak out anyway. Just to let you know, before working on it, I did unplug it. Oh, blimey. Shit, there's a little keyway supposed to be in there. Where's that gun? Oh, bollocks. Tiny little keyway goes in there. Where's that? Can you see it? Found it. I've tightened up those screws. I've just put that piece on there and it needs another little piece. This is the um, mechanism for uh, putting out the, um, the cat's paws. What's that doing? Lowering. That's lowering, isn't it? That's raising. Okay. OK, 
Okay, so that's rising. Okay, so that's all the way up now. I'll put the tool in. Because there's a tool and like a holder and uh, the holder can fly out. So that's retracted, so it's not going to take a cut. Okay, plug it in. Check that it's off. Yeah, it's off. So what, what happens now then is when that's loose, it won't, it won't, uh, it won't go down because the whole thing rotates. So it's, in other words, this is rotating with this. So um, it won't sort of screw itself down the thread. Then when I lock this screw, so that's locked there now, now it's winding down the thread. And if you look very carefully on the shaft there, you can see it. You can see it moving down. You can see the handle going around very slowly as well. Okay. Okay, so that's my temporary, in inverted commas, fix. So that will now work to do this but anyway she's up and running again a couple of hours work that's not too bad i'm just glad i was able to find that little tiny little key i really like this machine so you know i was a bit annoyed when it yeah that's it you you undo that and it stops it going down and to wind it up you wouldn't normally do it when it's running to wind it up I have to go that way, anti-clockwise, and help it with the handle there, so the nut isn't taking the whole force of the thing. I think that's okay. Right then, onwards and upwards, I'll set it up for this thing now and carry on with the job. Okay, thanks a lot for uh, checking out what I'm doing then, I'll uh, catch you on the next one. Bye. Hello, welcome to Mark's Garage. Um, <laughs> one of the YouTubers makes a big deal about things being unscripted. Well, all of mine are unscripted. Okay. I've got a little bit of a plan in my mind. I need to lengthen this by 83 millimeters. So I'm gonna shorten this to 83 mil I'm going to cut off that piece of spline. I'm going to use the spline to align it. And I'm just going to weld it around. I need to shorten this, but I want to make sure that the end is square with the, with the bore. So what I think I'm going to do is put this in the lathe, put that on there, I might actually use this one as it's, as it's cleaner. Put this one in the lathe. Put this on the end. Trim this down to length. And then and, and, and skim the end of it. And then I know the end will be square to the splines. And then cut the splines off. I'll bevel this but leave some of the original face on the end. And then when it's all welded up, that will be 83 mil longer and this end will be just the same as that but further down in theory you know years from now if it if it need be this could be cut off and that piece would be usable exactly like it is i just did a little sort of sanity check on this coupler coupling and that width there 
is 6.8 roughly 6.7 this end here seven point two so this side's slightly worn so this side is the side that I weld to the shaft and this side is this end that I'll put onto the pinion this end here is the one that I want to shorten I could see with the naked eye that this one was worn but I never measured it seven and a half about seven point seven better 7.4 this uh, this where this was on my roadster this where is what causes the pins to fail because th th this th this is trying to do this and it and it fatigues the pins and the pins break that's why it's important not to have a very hard pin because the pin will snap quicker that's why it's very important to get the alignment dead on every time it turns if the alignment is out the effect is that it's trying to do that and it wears it so this is scrap and this one this end where it says six spline six there that's the end that wants shortening right there's my piece that I've turned on the lathe, cut it off, and here's the stub. Oh, I might need to just cut that off there. But that's going to go into there. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna knock this in. So that's in now. This I'm a bit disappointed that this is a little bit loose on this shaft, but I think this shaft's a bit worn. So what that means is when that thing's out of the way, there's that washes amount of clearance, and you can see that by the fact that the the pin goes the light the hole goes that way a slight bit. So that there is in. It's got to go in there like that. I need to bevel that, which I can just do with a grinder. I can double check that that shaft is clear. That's still clear. So that's how I want it. Okay, there is a bit of play there. So I need to have this pulled tight in that direction to, to use the machine faces to align it. What I might do actually after the event is drill a hole and put a rosette weld there, two rosette welds there, just to make sure that that piece can't come out. Because if it come, come out and went up there, it'd, be, it'd rattle, wouldn't it, in the, in the shaft. Hello again. Right, it's a bit lighter in the day, so I should be able to fill that with weld now. And there's a similar one on the other side. So I'm going to weld this up now. I think I'm going to pre-warm it a bit with the oxyacetylene just to get some heat into it so it's not such a, a cold weld on the first hit. I've got to grind that. I want to do it while there's still some heat in it.
What I thought I would do is run a bead of weld, two beads of weld around here to just tighten this up a bit. Didn't know it was that hot. Okay. This is from an Allard apparently. But it was on eBay. And I bought it for not very much money. This and the torque tube. So I'm going to let all that cool down then. And hopefully, with a bit of luck. <laughs> I suppose it would have been a good idea to check. That should be the right length, shouldn't it? Shall I just not measure it and then I'll never know that it's wrong? Twelve sixty nine on the money. Do you remember that was our size? Just a fraction under 1270, look. It's alright, innit? I'll clean this end of it up. And that'll be good to go. We'll call it good at that then, that can all cool down. That can cool down. And um, we can move on to the next stage. But I, what I would like to do is check this for run out. Correct it if need be, and then check the torque tube for run out and correct that if need be. So that will all make interesting footage, won't it? Oh. Excuse me looking a bit scruffy, I'm long overdue, a haircut, beard trim and everything. And we're not even locked down. <laughs> okay, thanks a lot then. I'll catch you on the next one. Bye. Okay, I've just successfully done the first bore. Now this is a liner, so it's below standard. Standard size is 3.1875. Now this is my this has been my routine. I've been going to 3.190, which is that one I've just done there. I'm going to set it to 3.214, which is 24 thou over that. Then 3.224, which is 10 thou. Then 3.234, which is 10,000. Except on these three, I'm going to go to three and a half, because I found that comes out about where I want it. So those are my numbers. So I've just kept this close by, so I can just glance down at it and remember the numbers. Instead of trying to remember them in my head, I've got them written down there. And what I do, I put a new tip in before I take that cut. So that cut and that cut are taken with a new tip. So here's the thumb, uh, not thermometer. So here's the micrometer. And that, I don't know if you'll be able to see, is set to 3.1, uh, 90, because it's 3.1, 50, plus the 40s, 90. So there's 3.200, zero, zero. there's point two. 10, there's point two thirteen and a half, three point two thirteen and a half. I'll, I'll, put, I'll put my micrometer on and then I'll show you the, the setup. I'll stop the machine so that the tool's sticking out on this side over here, there. And what I do, I've got my Allen key there, and I've got this little tool shoved in a hole in the end there. Put two fingers underneath there. I put my thumb on the my thumb on there, 
and then I'll loosen that. And that's just snapped out now to the micrometer setting. I then get in a good position to read it. Get my light like that so I can read it better. I mean, this is still only a rough cut, but you know, it's good practice to get into your routine. And obviously, you have to make sure you remember to take the uh, micrometer off. Can you see it says the Bumer? This is a Bumer machine. So now I can use my electric drill to wind the machine down until the tool just clears. So I've just wound the electric drill down and I've just locked the screw. So now when I turn it on, it will start to process downwards. Okay, ready, go. Oh, that was close. So that's a 24 thou cut. That's 3.190 to 3.214. And sometimes when you put the light underneath, it's better. Can you see that? If I start getting chatter, I have to put a new tip in it. But what I do, I finish that bore with a new tip and then use that tip to rough this bore and so on down the, down the, down the engine. That's just on the verge of trying to chatter, that is. Okay. I'll bring you back when, you know, at the next stage. Okay, for the last two cuts, I'm going to put a new tip in. Now, it was a few days ago when I took the when I fitted this tip, so I'm not sure if it's both ends have been used. I don't think that end has been used actually. I think it is a new tip. Okay, I'll put this one back in, but the other way around. I think these, you know, modern tool holders with interchangeable tips are a great idea. I wouldn't like to have to do this with high speed steel tools and constantly having to sharpen them. Okay, so I'm going out to 2.22, three and a half. So there's, that's, start, that's like 2.10. Bear in mind, I've changed the tip, so it's got a slightly different setting. So there's 2.15, 2.20. So I need to go to the three and a half mark on there. I'm just trying to get this light where it can help me. I'm going to be one and a half back from the 25, so that's there. Okay. What I'm aiming at is a um, 45 thou over piston which is 2.2325. Go. Now this is only a 10 thou cut, so it should be lighter. A 10 thou cut and, uh, and uh, a new tip. Cutting, cutting nicely. That'll take approximately seven minutes to get to the bottom. I haven't got my depth stop on, but I just leave it running until I, it stops making a noise. Okay, I'll bring you back. Okay, this is the critical one now. Three point two two four. That's the last set in there. Well, three point two 
three and a half there. So tool up the end, Allen key there, two fingers underneath, lift that, hold that up with my little finger. Right, 25, there, 30, there, 31, 32, 33, and uh, half. Lock the thing, turn it on. Are you looking anywhere near the right direction? There we go, that's the last cut. And then a little lick with the hone, and that'll be it. Stunt camera. Mind your eyes. So there you go, that's how I've been doing the boring. I haven't showed every hole because <laughs> it's boring. Um, but the machine, I've managed to effect a, a repair that's good enough to keep it going. And with these modern drills, it's not a real hardship having to do that. Um, so that's good. That's another little en another engine where I've managed to, you know, bring it back from the dead. Who knows? Will it run? Who knows if there's a crack somewhere that I don't know about? I just don't know yet. But for the cost of a set of liners and the, you know, hobby time to set the machine up and, and uh, run it through, you know, it's, it's time well spent, I think. Okay, I'll leave it running now and uh, let it finish its job. And I'll, I won't bring it back when there's more to show because I won't show any more on this video. I'll leave it running now and let it finish its job. And I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks very much for popping in. Don't forget to share with friends on social media. Thanks a lot then. Bye. There we are, finished ball. Thanks very much for watching. Cheers then, bye.